Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In the first part of the garage door opener saga, I found that during safety feature testing that the reverse force detection was marginal and that the target of reversing when closing on a 2x4 was not being achieved. After consulting the installation manual again and measuring the door weight per the instructions, I found that the springs were no longer sufficiently supporting the weight of the door. I do suspect the main reason for the 2x4 test failure is an unevenness in the garage door slab due to cracking and settling from previous water issues around the house. You can see my Water Wars video series for more on that. After doing some research, I learned that the door springs are typically good for around 10,000 cycles, or 10 to 12 years. These springs were installed around 16 years ago, so safe to say they've surpassed their service life and are due for replacement. So let's go over the anatomy of a overhead garage door. So in my case, this is a sectional door. You can get single doors that are a solid panel. Um, in this case, the door rides up on these rails with these rollers. And then there's a cable system connected to a set of extension springs. Another option is a torsion spring, as you can see here, where force on that cable is exerted by a single spring that's coiled up. Another thing to note on these here is that extra cable that's actually going inside the spring. What that is, is a safety cable. Uh, when these springs go, they will release all that energy that they're holding in one shot. Uh, it sounds like a gunshot going off and if they don't have that cable, they can fly, they can flap around, and if you happen to be in the vicinity when they go, um, it could cause severe injury or even death. So those safety cables keep that spring up out of the way, keep the pieces up out of the way, so when they do go, you know, if it breaks in the middle, it'll, it'll split. Uh, if it comes off from the end, which that tends to be where I have seen them go, is right at the end, and uh, it'll just, poof, it'll smash in and, and but it'll stay up out of the way. So that's what those cables are for. They are very important. If your garage door does not have them, you should have them installed. I used a bathroom scale to measure the weight of the door. First measurement showed about 18 pounds, which is higher than the 10 to 15 pounds recommended weight for one-handed lifting by a single person. The first thing I wanna do is secure the door. Use a pair of locking pliers just to keep this up because once those springs are disconnected, full weight of the door is going to be trying to come down. And then we're going to disconnect the cable. Come on. Like so. I'm just going to secure it. I'm just going to secure it in place temporarily there. After disconnecting the springs, I weighed the door again and measured about 109 pounds. Wow, look at all these springs to choose from. Back from the store, got some new springs. Notice here, there's the different ratings. 90 pound, 110 pound, 130, 140, 150, 160. Uh, since we weighed about 109 here, it's the 110, so I got the white. I also picked up a set of cables as well, just in case I don't want to have to make another trip. Notice how these springs are looped on this eye bolt. So once I take the tension off the spring, I have to kind of pull it up and around to free it from the anchor point. Now we'll start by decoupling the spring from the anchor bolt that's up here. There we go. Okay. All right. We've got the safety cable here. We have to disconnect this. Screw this. cable out. Come on. There we go. Free that up. And then loop this around. Yeah. 
Okay. And then bring this down. Okay. Let's take apart the pulley assembly so we can get this off. out of the cable okay I want to inspect these and just make sure they look okay um, there were no pulleys in stock at the store these don't do a lot of cycling uh, I don't see any real signs of damage or anything seems to have run pretty smoothly and the only thing I think of is throwing a little grease in there but other than that that's about it also while this is apart I want to take a look at the cable um, I did buy a cable but if this cable is not showing any signs of fatigue uh, I'll probably just leave it looks like it's in Good shape, no signs, no, no um, portions of the cable appear to be broken. So yeah, I think we're okay. Okay. So that's in. could set this up in a way that's easier to do but I'm trying to do this for a camera on a tripod so <laughs> if I had an assistant to actually hold the camera I could probably set this up differently but that's what happens when you're a one-man band here okay so there we go that's on just have to tighten up the bolts I just want to get the safety cable hooked back up so that way I can set the position of the cable onto the pulleys. Okay. And we'll tighten that back up. Okay, so now we can hook up the spring. Pulley, get the cable onto the pulley. Come on. There we go. These definitely have some force behind them. Come on. Okay. It doesn't help that I have an air duct right here in my way so trying to get in here is not easy okay so I've got the cable I've got the spring let's take a look at it did you notice the cable tangle yeah, I did too after I recorded this shot. I fixed it. With the first spring done, let's replace the second. This safety cable was actually anchored over here, but was looped at the other end. So I had to disconnect this by just unscrewing this bolt, pulling the cable out, and then feeding it out. 
Here's where I demonstrated how not to use an adjustable wrench. I figured keeping the cable connected would make controlling the spring easier. Looking back on this footage, I'm thinking now that attaching the anchor side and then running the cable might have been the easier way. Hey, after all, it's been 16 years since I last touched a garage door spring. All right, now I'll reattach the cable to the door. All right, now that we're all set here, we take this off. All right, let's try it out. The door was no longer heavy enough to actually trigger the scale. So I tried a differential measurement where I weighed myself, then I weighed myself holding the door. It wouldn't give me an accurate measurement, but I'm going to assume it's at least a few pounds lighter than the original 18 I measured. Uh, let's re I'm going to replace this uh, gasket on the bottom because it was cut short and I know we get rodents coming in, so it really should go end to end. So I've got this kind of anchor. <laughs> So this has, you can see on the ends, it's T-shaped, and those slide into these grooves. Loop it around. Might be easy as a two might be easier as a two person job. It's definitely getting harder as it goes further across. And then you can see there's a little bit of overhang. I just have to cut that off with a knife. Uh, it says to crimp the uh, the channel, so I'm gonna just try and see if I can do that with the channel locks here. Just to, it's just to keep it from sliding side to side. I think that should be good. Otherwise, yep, you just pop it like I just did. So that's not the best way to do it. I think that's probably good. It's not going anywhere. It's just to keep it from sliding sideways. So it looks like um, changing out the springs definitely helped because with less weight on the door to assist, the garage door opener sees a high load sooner and you saw that there was less compression of the box before it reversed. So that's good. That means if somebody is their child or whatever that is not catching the sensor, um, it won't apply excessive force before it reverses, which is good. So it could save from severe injury or death. Um, but that's why you have both systems. You have the force reverse, but you also have the, the optical system. So that way it won't even come down. You know, if I block this and then I hit the remote, it just flashes. It's basically saying, sorry, I can't go. So, all right, all set. All right. So I want to just do a more stern warning with this video than on my other ones. Normally I say, know your limits. In the case of dealing with garage door springs, um, especially if you have torsion springs, uh, I don't work with torsion springs. I know my limits. Those things can be deadly. Um, you've got a lot of energy all wound up and if they go, um, they can, they can take a limb off. They can take a head off. I mean, they, they're, they're nasty. So you really, or slice up. So, I don't touch those, uh, extension springs I have done in the past. Uh, I know my way around them. I know how to handle them. So I consider myself comfortable working with them. 
Uh, this video is more of a guide so you can see what it takes to do them, what it takes to work with them, um, and also as a guide to if you are having somebody come in to service them, know what to expect, know what should be getting done. Um, I mean, these are not overly expensive parts. I think, um, you know, I think it was like 70 bucks to do two springs and the cables, which I ended up not using. So if somebody comes in and says, oh, it's going to be you know, $500 and you know, to replace the springs, you may want to think about what they're doing and uh, get a quote because uh, they might be trying to take you for a ride. But anyway, uh, just wanted to give kind of a disclaimer on that. Um, take my video as a guide. Uh, and by all means, as always, know your limits. And if this is not something you think you can do, definitely call in a professional. All right, well, that does it for another series of videos. Uh, the first one being the garage door opener installation and then learning that I had another problem. And then uh, this video, which was fixing that problem, which was replacing the springs. So hopefully you learned as much as I did in uh, doing this here, like reading the instructions beforehand completely, because otherwise I would have tested it and realized I needed to do this before I did the opener. But anyway, uh, as, as always, you know, it, it's a learning experience. Um, I read all the comments and when I see a comment that, you know, I've shown somebody something that they didn't know before or helped them solve a problem uh, that they didn't think they'd be able to solve, um, those are so worth it to me. They, they make this effort that I'm doing to produce these videos. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's what I get out of this is knowing that I'm helping others. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button if you like this video. Uh, hit the notification bell so that way you'll know when I'm sending you new videos. And until the next one, thank you again. See you later.